the spring of 1980 was, um, was a really exciting time for me. Um, I was teaching um, at a boys prep school in a little town in Pennsylvania and really loving that. And I was also at that time getting ready for my mission trip to Brazil, which I've told you about. Uh, but it was an exciting time because there was a lot to do, a lot of preparations, a lot of things to uh, get ready before that trip could happen. I mean, I had to get, first of all, I had to get the permission for it, uh, visas, passports, all that kind of stuff, uh, study Portuguese. So, I mean, it was um, a real exciting time. And during that whole time, the whole spring of 1980, I felt in an overwhelming way the presence of God, very active in my life, very near to me. Um, it was, oh, he was telling me, this is what I want you to do. Uh, this is what you're supposed to be doing. And having that feeling of his closeness, uh, his nearness, really kind of guided me and sustained me through that time. And as that time drew closer and closer, that sense of his presence grew stronger and stronger. And again, I just knew that I was doing the right thing. I just knew that I was doing what I was supposed to do. And the day finally came, and we got on the plane and flew to Brazil, and that flight was was, I mean, uh, you know, up there in the clouds, and he was there with me. I mean, it, just, it was just this intense experience of his love and of his presence. And uh, we got to Brazil, we landed, we got off the plane, and God stayed on it. Um, I think he might have flown to Rio, you know, something like that. But, but all of a sudden, he was gone. I mean, he would send a card every now and then, you know, wish, wish you were here. You know. uh, but no, he was, he was gone. Uh, and I was left with this incredible sense of desolation. Uh, I never felt so alone and so frightened and so fragile in all my life. I mean, he was gone. And here I'm in this strange land, strange country, don't speak the language, all kinds of customs that I'm not accustomed to, and he's not there. And it was just an overwhelming fear that, that, that took hold of me. And again, the sense of being alone, a sense of being desolate. And gradually, I began to understand what was happening. Uh, I began to understand that what he was telling me was, whatever you think you know about me, whatever you think you understand, forget it. And learn it all over again. Learn it the right way this time. He was telling me, basically, it was time for me to grow up. It was time to be, uh, for me to move into an adult faith. A mature faith. And that's what I think about as I, as I look at uh, today's gospel lesson, one that we all know so well, very familiar, but it's so interesting because there's so much that happens there that I never really noticed before until this week as well. Um, but the story begins when Jesus is 12 years old. And when you're 12 years old, that's when Jewish boys become Jewish men. So he was making this passage from childhood to adulthood and went to Jerusalem with Mary and Joseph for the Passover. Probably his first experience of Jerusalem, his first experience of the Passover in Jerusalem. And apparently it really struck him because when his family moved on back to Nazareth, he stayed behind. And they find him after they discovered he was gone after three days, and that's kind of significant too. Uh, but they find him in the temple and it says that he's seated among the elders asking questions. That, by the way, is pretty much a stock description in that time, in that culture, of what a, a, an avid student would do. So he was there as a student. Okay? This is no longer the boy Jesus. This is the young man Jesus in the temple asking questions. And Mary says to him, why have you done this? Your father and I have been searching for you. Listen to what he says. And I never noticed this until this week. Listen to what he says. Why are you searching for me? Didn't you know that I should be about my father's business? See the shift there? All of a sudden, he knows who his father is. All of a sudden, he knows who he is. As he moved into adulthood, became aware who his father really was, became aware of who he was and what his mission was, or at least had the beginnings of that. And it's interesting that even with that, he goes back to Nazareth with them and remains submissive to them. And that's important. That's really important. So where are we? We've come through the holidays. We've experienced, hopefully, in our hearts, the, the experience and the overpowering experience of the incarnation. 
We discover that he, who he is and that who he has been proclaimed to the nations, an epiphany. And it's time for us to grow up. It's time for us in the church to become adults, to move into the mature faith that we are called to. It's time for us to discover who he is and who we are in him. And what that means, becoming an adult, uh, becoming, uh, moving into a mature faith, means that we need to let go of whatever our preconceived notions and ideas about him are, and even uh, our preconceived notions about who we are. Moving into adulthood means that we discover him all over again, and in that, discover who we are in him. That's what this is all about. Becoming an adult, moving into mature faith, is what we're supposed to do. And when we do that, God reveals to us who we really are, because he knows us even better than we know ourselves. He knows our true selves, and as he begins to reveal himself to us, he also begins to reveal us to us. Let's us know who we really are. Let's us know what our mission, what our purpose is, what it is that we're supposed to be doing, what it is that we're supposed to be. That's what adult faith is all about, discovering him in a new way and discovering ourselves in him. Well, how does that happen? Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds. That's what St. Paul taught us. Be transformed. The process of, of transformation is what adulthood is all about. It's, it's, it's letting go of whatever uh, notions and concepts we have and allowing him to act on us. And as we allow God to act on us again, he lets us know who we are, lets us know who he is. And that's what adult faith is all about. That's what we're supposed to come to, uh, that knowledge of him, that knowledge of ourselves in him, so that we can give witness to him and proclaim him to the nations so that other people can discover who he is. When we allow ourselves to be transformed, then we transform life all around us. That's the beauty of being in the church. We get to transform everybody. We get to make a new world. We get to make be part of the new creation that God has called us to become a part of. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Adult faith means that we, we no longer cling to, again, our notions of, of what we think and what we expect, but we allow him to teach us. It means that he's in us in such a way that we, we learn to totally depend on him, to totally trust him, to understand that our life, our sustenance, everything that we have, Everything that we are comes from him and depends on him. It means that we become submissive, as Christ became submissive. So as an adult, as a young adult, he still chose to be submissive because he still had to grow. He still had to learn. And so do we. Moving into adulthood means that we become submissive and that we place ourselves in his presence, under his care, so that he can teach us and guide us. And again, make us into who we're supposed to be. It's kind of paradoxical, but becoming an adult means becoming childlike. Not childish, but childlike. Knowing who we are and knowing where our life and our substance comes from. When we do that, then we're adults. When we do that, then we possess a mature and lively faith. Do you think that today the world needs that kind of witness? Do you think that today we need a mature and lively and active Christian faith, an adult faith? Do you think we need that? Yesterday's events ought to tell us something so much. The current political discourse, the atmosphere that we've created has become immature and childish. And we need, as adult Christians, to stand against that. We need, as adult Christians, to give witness to the reality that there's something more and there's something better, and there's a different way to live. We can do that if we rely on him. We can do that if we become submissive to him 
and understand that all that we have and all that we are comes from Him, and that we can live the way we're supposed to live if we become adults in Him. So let's do that, become submissive, and grow as He did in grace and in stature, and in doing so, proclaim to the world that there is another way. Amen.